going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use CSS, JavaScript, and images for your apps with Flask and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to look at JavaScript, CSS, and images. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books. For one time fee at just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Flask Friday once again, the best day of the week. And in this video, we're going to look at static files, JavaScript, CSS, and images. And using static files with Flask is super easy. Shouldn't take but just a few minutes to explain this, but very useful. Now, up until now, we've been using Bootstrap, which is JavaScript, CSS, and images sort of all rolled into one. But we're hosting that on the Bootstrap CDN. We're just pulling it in. That's not something we can really modify unless we use our own JavaScript, CSS, and images. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. Not modify Bootstrap, but just use static files like that. So you can see I've got an image here. I changed the color of our headline thing. I made some JavaScript down here with tiny little text. We're going to look at all of that in this video. Okay, so I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal as always. And you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, where you can also find a link to the Flask playlist. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is head over here and in our main root directory, right click and create a new folder. And you can see down here it pops up. We want to call this static. Now, Flask knows to look for static. That's a certain thing that Flask understands. So we definitely need to name this static. So inside of here, you could put all your JavaScript, CSS, and images right in that directory, and that would work fine. But, you know, best practices, we want to separate this even more. So let's create some new folders inside of our static folder. And the first one is going to be images. And then let's do another one and call it CSS. And then another one and call it JS, short for JavaScript. Now, in each of these folders, we're going to put each of these things. So let me pull up a file directory here in Windows. And I'm just in our Flasker directory. This is our main directory. And you see now we have this static and we have this images directory. I've got a, an image that I want to use. So I'm going to pull it over and just drop it in there, northpeak.png. So we'll play with that later. And you can see, boom, it pops right up here. We can open it inside of here if we want to look at it. Okay, so how do we actually use this? Well, let's come to our CSS file here and let's create a new file. And then see it pops up. And I'm going to save this as style. Dot CSS and all CSS files end in dot CSS. So that's uh, sort of normal. And inside of here, we can create some basic CSS. I'm just going to create uh, some style for our H1 tag. So I'm just going to turn this to dark blue. And maybe we want to put the font size to like, I don't know, 60 pixels or something huge, whatever. And maybe we want to change the body of our website. So I changed the background to F4, F4, F4. This is sort of a very light silver gray color. So now if we head back over here, you can see this is all sort of gray a little bit. And actually, let me refresh this so we see what it looks like before. So I'm in my C Flasker directory, our virtual environment is turned on, we can run Flask run to run the server. And when we do, we come back over here, we can come back here to name and you can see, I type in John, it just says the screen is white. It says, hello, John in black. So how do we make these changes in CSS that we just created right here? How do we make them show up on the website? Well, let's save this, make sure this is saved. And let's head over to our base.html file. And this is where our basic head stuff is. And you can see from our earlier video, this is the bootstrap CSS link. So I'm just going to copy this and paste in another one. But instead of bootstrap, I'm going to say rcss. And then instead of this, we can get rid of that. And we can get rid of all of this integrity stuff. So this is a basic link to a style sheet, right? It's a link href, you point to the style sheet, you give it an array of style sheet. So where do we want to point this? Well, we want to point it to this style.css sheet. So how do we do that? Well, we use a Django for URL tag. So that's for underscore URL. And this is the same tag we've used for other things like links. So for instance, if we come over to our nav bar and look through here, you can see this URL for tag for this link, right? Same thing, we're creating a link, but this one's a little bit different. We put user and then name equals. For this, we wanna put static in quotation marks and then a comma and then set the file name equal to something. 
Now notice these are double quotes. So inside of here, we have to use single quotes or vice versa. We could make single quotes outside of here. And if we did inside, we would have to use double quotes. So the file name now is going to be pointing to this file. So it's in CSS. So we would do CSS slash style dot CSS. Okay, so that should work. Now, if we come back over to our website and hit reload, uh oh, for URL. I misspelled URL for. It is definitely Flask Friday. <laughs> All right, so URL underscore four. Wow. <laughs> Dyslexia. All right, so now we come back here, hit reload. You see, this is now blue. The whole thing has a gray background. See right here, it's white in this form. Outside is sort of a gray color. So that's how we use CSS. Now we can change this any way we want. So if we come over here, we want to change this to red. We can do that. Come back, hit reload. Boom, now it's red, right? We want to change this, uh, this background from gray to, I don't know, something else. Green. <laughs> I don't know how we could do that. Come back, hit reload, green. Wow, that is horrible. <laughs> so I don't know, put this back, change it to dark blue. So now obviously we don't really care about this CSS. This is probably not how we're going to keep this. I just want to show you how to create a CSS style sheet with whatever CSS you want in it and then use it. So, okay, we've got the CSS. Now, how do we use the images? Very, very similar. Let's head back over here to our name and let's see where it says hello name underneath there. Let's put a line break and let's put an image. So traditionally, an image tag looks like this in HTML, IMG SRC, and the source needs to point to the image. So again, we can use a URL for tag, not a for URL tag, and again, point it to static and and then set the file name equal to and we want this to point to images slash this is going to be north peak dot png. Now this is going to be very big, but I'll keep it like this just to show you how to change that. Come back here, hit reload, type in John, click submit, boom, there's the image. Now this is much too big, so we can resize this using basic HTML like we always would. So just go with equals, I don't know, put this at 1100 or something. That should fit. Come back here, hit reload, try this again. Okay. Now it's now it's automatically resized. Piece of cake. So okay, we're moving right along now. Let's do some JavaScript. So let's head over here to our JavaScript and let's create a new file. And let's go file save as and I'm just going to call this my file dot js. And let's create some very basic JavaScript. So let's go document dot get element by ID. And let's search for demo. And this is going to be dot inner HTML. And let's set that equal to this was created with JavaScript. Okay. So just some very basic JavaScript, and I'm not going to really go into what this is just we will change an element of your page to whatever we just set that equal to. So now if we come back here, and let's go underneath our image, let's put a couple of line breaks. Let's create a P tag with an ID of demo. And this is stuff. Da, da, da. Close our P tag, right? So if we go ahead and save this, this will put on the screen, this is stuff. And we're giving it an ID of demo because over here we set demo to that. So if we save this and come back here and hit reload, we see down here, this is stuff. No JavaScript has actually happened yet. So to actually use JavaScript on the screen, same thing as the other tags. We just need to come down here and create a script tag for JavaScript and SRC, same as always. And then we always want to close our script tag, right? Now we just call our script. So again, same tag, URL underscore four, static. And then set the file name equal to, and this is going to be my file dot js. Okay. So this is just the basic way you call JavaScript files, you, you use a script tag, and then you just point to the file. So here we're using the URL for pet pointing to static. Oh, this is not my file. This is going to be JS slash my file all the errors today on Flask Friday. So okay, let's save this. I caught that one though. <laughs> save this come back here and reload. 
Now, instead of it saying this is stuff, it says this was created with JavaScript because that JavaScript file was called and it changed the text dynamically. Very cool. So uh, let's mix this all up. We've got CSS. Let's use CSS on this text. So we could do that. Head back over here. It's Flash Friday. Let's create a new style. And we know, let's see, the ID is demo. So we can just call demo. And then we can do whatever we want. Let's go, I don't know, font underscore size. Let's put this at like 12 pixels, make it real small. I don't know. Playing around. Again, a reload. Boom, now it's very small. And if we want to have it change the color too, we can do that, whatever you want. So I'm just going to copy this down here. Okay, so save this reload. It's flash Friday. And you can sort of make out that it's it's blue now since the text is so small, it's kind of hard to read. Uh, we could change that if we want. 42. <laughs> make it big. Boom, this great. This was created with JavaScript. Whatever. Let me change that back. So very cool. So that's how you use static files. Uh, very, very easy, right? We just create a static directory and inside of there, I like to put these separate directories because it's a good way to keep track of what's JavaScript, what's images and what's CSS. It's best practices to do that. It makes sense to sort of keep those things all separate. But like I said, you don't have to do that. You can put them all in the static file. And then if you did, instead of putting like slash images, you would just put North Peak, right? but we put them in the images directory. So we have to put that in the file name thing there. And then it's just URL for like every other link that you create. The only difference is you started out with static and then you add this file name like that. So pretty simple and really straightforward. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. It made $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.